As I continue this exclusive interview with Tupac's biological brother, Billy Garland Jr., the question is, if the security guard at Bellevue Hospital told Billy Garland Sr. that Tupac's real father was dead when Billy Garland Sr. showed up to the hospital to see his son after he was shot in New York, then who came and told the security guard that Billy Garland Sr. was actually Tupac's biological father so that he could be led into the hospital to see his son? Yeah, let's get deep. Let's get into some more of this straight game. Yeah. Blackjack, blackjack. Life is like the game of cards. It's not what you dealt, but how you play it. Remember they used to laugh at a brother. Yeah, um, so I, I definitely understand what you were saying by that. But I, I think another thing that, that got Tupac mad was because when he went to jail, right? Knowing one thing about it, because remember, he did the vibe interview once he was in jail with uh, 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 the guy, Kevin. And um, but once right, he went right. to jail, but once he went to jail, I think um, Biggie didn't go see him. He didn't go to see him, exactly. right? Shit he like that, right, right? Right. So how do how do you what do you think? And but hold on, yeah. let me, before I even go there, let me check okay. this out. Before I even go yeah. there, when I talk to your pops, when I talk to your father, you and Tupac's father, when I talked to him, he told me about after he got shot, right? Yeah. When he went to the hospital, right? What had happened in regards to that? He he told me that um when he got there, he said that the um. The security guard, when he walked up and he said he was Tupac's father, the security guard told him that Tupac's father was dead and how 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 much that crushed him. You know what I mean? Um, right, right. What do you what do you think about that? And he then he said uh, a, a Feeney or, or, or Tupac's auntie Gloria came out. I believe it was a Feeney came out and said, no, that is Tupac's father. You can let him in. So with that monumental thing right there happening. Um, and I'm sure you probably talk to your father about it. Um, with that monumental thing right there happening, what what how how does that make you feel? You know what I mean? Because that was a real big part of what it was. But I will be honest, right. your father did say that Biggie came to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. My 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 dad always told me that story. He told okay. me uh how um he met Biggie, how Biggie walked up to him. That's what he said. He said Biggie walked up to him and uh, introduced himself and, you know, just gave him the whole thing of how he feels bad and sorry about, you know, Pac being, you know, laid up and shit, shot. Um, so because of that, my old man has the feeling that uh, Biggie didn't have anything to do with, you know, for that for that reason, you know what I'm saying? And that, and, and that was- that, would, that yeah. would be totally understandable. And that was the, what I was right. going to ask you next. I was like, would that be the reason? Because like I said, a lot of people have tried to paint Biggie, you know, because I guess somebody has to be the villain, if you will. And right. you, and like like Tupac had to be the villain in the hotel room involving the girl. You right. know, Biggie was the more known person other than Puffy. And he was the artist coming out. And from what Tupac had was, was in regard to his feelings about some of the stuff, right? Right. So Biggie had to be the villain. So is that the reason why you feel like that he didn't have from talking to your father? Is that the reason why you feel like he didn't have anything to do with that? I mean, it could be. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't put it past nobody. Shit. You got you got a psychopath that'll kill a motherfucker and then smile in somebody's face, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. In the next second. So, you know, um, I don't put it past nobody. It's just it's just too much bullshit that went on right. to make me believe. Okay, okay, like I said, yeah, maybe Biggie didn't have anything to do with pocket and shot directly, right? Right. But uh, you wasn't you wasn't a you wasn't a friend either, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Uh, you wasn't a friend like like you was putting on. Right. Uh, the way the way Pac felt that y'all was, you know what I'm saying? That y'all was close enough. Um, he didn't like go to see like him. Just, just like you just said, he ain't even go see him in jail. Right. Uh, he didn't even write him. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even write him. He didn't even go see him. And right. then not only that, I always point to 
the biggest shit. It's like, it just doesn't make sense, bro. If that was my, if, if my boy just got shot, you're supposed to be my boy. And we, right. we ain't got no animosity with each other, no, no beef or nothing like that. And you get shot. You know what I'm saying? Not only do you get shot, but niggas don't even know who shot you really like that. Like, it's still a mystery type shit at this point. And, right. and I go ahead and drop who shot you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. mad suspect. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it, it, that, yeah, the optics of that don't even look, you know, bad timing, uh, bad, cho bad choice of words under the circumstances. And yeah, yeah. And, and of course, I'm sure that's, that's through Puffy and the, the record labels, you know what I'm saying, as a business opportunity to right. jump on that, you know, because they know that shit's just going to go fucking viral, you know what I'm saying, before right. viral was even viral, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but, right, the optics, the optics don't look good, you know what yeah, I'm saying? It just didn't on, look good, yeah. Right, just on a street level. Y'all niggas talking like y'all on some street shit. Right. On some street level shit, that doesn't look good. You know that what I'm saying? This supposed good. to be your man's. It's supposed to be your man's. Right. And you sitting up here dropping a song talking about some who shot you. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. So, and you know, and, and and dealing with the song who shot you, you know, you have a lot of people that came out, uh, Little C's, uh, Charlie Baltimore. It's, it was a lot of people that came out that basically said, and you know, um, I partially believe what that is, that the song was done prior to uh, Tupac being shot. But like I said, once again, back to your point, is right. that being, um, I, would, I would say I would say reckless enough to do that, understanding what Tupac and Biggie's relationship was and right. dropping that and it being so incendiary in which it, it worked, like you said, it worked. Because the right. mystery was, you know, you know, who shot you? Separate the weak from the obsolete. You know what I mean? And, and it, left it, it left scenario. it in the air. Yeah, they left it in the air to, as, as to what that really, really meant, though. All and right, so, yeah, right. so I, I, like I said, I go back to, you know, your pops and, and him coming to the hospital. And so that's the other thing that, you know, um, I think, do you think that Biggie was under um, some kind of pressure to not really say anything, you know, based on the dudes that was that was right. around, you know, like, you know, the guys that that, that we that. understand the, that, that shot Tupac? At the core like there was some real, like there was some real heavy hitters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Behind the scenes, like some real, real gangsters behind the scenes. Yeah. Right. I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And it's probably true. You know right. what I'm saying? It's probably true. And niggas probably put pressure on big, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, you know, but it was just, yeah, it was just a lot of a lot of bullshit that went on, you know. So like so so like I'm saying, so that. Uh, that obviously feeds the fire. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. obviously uh, um, um, pours fuel on the fire. Because it's but, like you choosing but, sides. It's like you choosing right. sides. Right, right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? You yeah. don't come see me. You right. got this fucking song out. You you putting out interviews, cut uh, uh the Vibe magazine interview, um blatantly uh um um going against what I'm saying, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So it's like, if I'm lying or I'm exaggerating about what happened, right. you know what I'm saying? I absolutely believe everything Pac said about that night. How the nigga came up, he got shot, he came out the elevator, and now everybody looked at him all crazy and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was looking at him, you know? It, it's just a lot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was a lot, um, yeah. It's a lot, but, but you know, it, it's just not a good look. It's just not it's a good look. Not a good look, Especially yeah. you talking about, that's your boy. You know, you're yeah. supposed to be no, that's that's boy. that's true. That's true. So I just wanted to I wanted to deal with that, like in its in it, in its intricacies, because like I said, there's a lot of moving parts in regards to that. And like I said, so right. so what I'm gonna ask you now is ultimately, if if Tupac and Biggie had lived, right? Do you think that they would have been able to overcome uh, the obstacles that had uh, that were before them at that particular time, including the Faith Evans situation? <laughs> the faith that was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, like, because I was actually, like I said, I was with your brother that night. We were at, at the Hollywood Athletic Club when he met her. So a lot right, of people. Right, yeah, I seen your video. Yeah, yeah I seen yeah. your video. So a lot of people didn't know. People thought that Pac was capping when he did um, hit him up. I never, I never, I never thought, I never doubted. I never doubted it once. Okay, I so check this out. Once. So do you think that if Tupac and Biggie had lived, would they have been able to squash uh, their beef? You know that's a that's a tough one to answer because 
you want to say yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because right. they're older and then maybe more mature now and they let bygones be bygones type shit. But then when you really think about what was it over? You know what I'm saying? What was the beef about? And it wasn't just the shit wasn't nothing to you know to sneeze about. It like it wasn't no, no minute small thing. Right. Like right. it was life and death Absolutely. situations that was going on. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um right. the whole shit, the whole shit would everybody know the story with Snoop being in New York. And Biggie put an announcement on the radio, and and the next thing you know, Snoop shit get shot up. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, shit was going down back in them times, life and death situations. Right. So you know, knowing me, <laughs> knowing me, and how and you know, how I am, that would be very hard to squash something with somebody that serious. You know what I'm saying? When you're dealing with life and death, and life and death, you, right? All your peoples, whatever trying to cause me bodily harm you know what i'm saying like right so it's it's, it's you know it's kind of hard to to answer that yeah no i and 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 i, and I appreciate like i say i appreciate your honesty and, and being candid about that man will garland jr in the house in the building uh uh hip-hop uh monica name five faces look out for him it's your boy delray yeah straight gang